Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at Jazz at Catano here in New York City. Israeli-born jazz guitarist Ronnie Ben-Hur this weekend here at Jazz at Catano is celebrating his 50th birthday, and he's doing it with two special performances. First, he's playing with this quartet featuring the legendary NEA jazz master and jazz icon, Frank West. And then on Saturday, he's performing selections off his brand new CD, Our Thing, on the Motema Records label. And what this record is, is one, he's staying within the confines of his jazz trio, but he's also investigating and playing a lot of Brazilian and Latin music. Tonight, we're going to sit down and talk about his Israeli upbringing, how he was exposed to jazz, and also talk about how he got acclimated to the American jazz and music scene and how he became an accomplished jazz guitarist. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Mr. Ronnie Ben-Hur, live here on the Pace Report, live at Jazz at Catano here in New York City. Congratulations, happy birthday, you. and you have a dynamic CD called Our Thing on the Motema Records label, and this is a trio record where you're staying within the confines of the traditional bebop and straight ahead jazz, but also you're going into Latin jazz. Yes, actually more of the Latin, and uh, it's hard to say what kind of, you know, Latin is such a broad definition because Duduca brings the Brazilian, Duduca da Fonseca, the drummer, brings the Brazilian elements and sens sensibility to the record. Santi has a lot of uh, Latin jazz influences. My influences are really more Middle Eastern, but in many ways they parallel, you know, the, the, the what we call Latin jazz has so many rhythms that are from Africa. 
and the Middle Eastern and the North African heritage of mine is from Africa as well. So I guess you could you would call it it's an infusion or, or fusion of all those elements, and uh, you could call it New York jazz, Latin slash whatever you want to call it, because that's really what it is. You couldn't say it is, you know, Latin jazz from this island or that country in South America and vice or, or uh, etc. Because it's very broad, very very uh, uh, influences from all over, from all over, and I guess. Africa is the uh, common, you know, beginning, but we have so much of the European influences of the harmony, the American great, great jazz influence. Uh, so I, I guess it's like a soup, you know. We are all jazz musicians, that's for sure. Our, our foundation is and roots are in jazz, but we have other roots from other places, and they all kind of come together in, in this CD. You know. There's seven original compositions on here. Tell me about how you guys got together to put the songs together and how you guys kind of verbally communicated how you wanted this to sound. Well, four of those songs are Santi, Santi De Briano uh, songs. And uh, over the last, I would say about six or seven or eight years, I've been playing with Santi often and we've done a lot of different projects together. And I always love these compositions. So these are songs that we played before and songs that uh, I really enjoyed playing. And so it was just a matter of, okay, let's pick some of those songs. And the same goes for the songs that I've done, that I wrote. And, and uh, we asked Duduka to bring a song to the mix, and he brought his song, Isabella. So the songs that Santi and I uh, brought to the record are actually songs that we played before, songs that we were familiar with and uh, we loved from each other. And the song that uh, Duduka brought was a new song to us uh, and, and it works really great. What's great about this uh, uh, situation is that the arrangement, the, f the way that the tune evolves is very organic. It's not a situation where the, the composer or, or whoever is going to arrange it comes and says, okay, we're going to do this, 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 and that. It's more of like, here's this tune. Let's do something with it. And, and at the rehearsal, pieces come together. Somebody says, oh, how about this? How about that? And it's wonderful that way. And, and you can feel it in the recording that it, it is a, a very um, uh, cooperative project. <laughs> Tunisia and then they had to leave and go to Israel and I want to know how you really really knew in Israel and in Tunisia that you knew that the guitar was going to be your calling it's a good question and, and I don't know if I have a precise answer for that because the way it turned out was that my brother my oldest brother we are seven and I'm the youngest he's the oldest his name is Yehuda he suggested that I will play guitar. He came to my mother and says, let's get 
only a guitar so he can take some lessons. Uh, I don't know what made him, I have to ask him really, why did he see something that I wanted to do it or who was just his, his way of thinking that would be a good thing for my young brother to do. But uh, I had no idea that guitar was my calling until I was 17. So I played, you know, I played some folk song and then some rock songs and whatever was on the radio that I liked to pick up and with no thoughts at all of making it a career. And then suddenly, at age 17, I said, this is really what I want to do. And I, and I have, I think, and, and other musicians tell me that too, it's, you don't find your instrument, your instrument finds you. It's some kind of a, a way that is not in your control. Some kind of way, if you meant to do this, the circumstances make it that you will do that. Because from from that age, 17 to now, the guitar music was very, very, very large part of my life. And, and wherever I went, wherever I lived, how I moved around was determined because of, were choices that I made because of the music. But I had no idea back then that this was going to be like that. And I had, even, even when I decided that I want to make this something that I want to pursue seriously, I had no idea how much commitment I would need to have, and I had no idea that I would stick with it. You know what I mean? So it's almost like the guitar took me and says, come on, you come in with me now. You know? It's, it's not like I said to myself, I'm going to choose this path. Because music is, is, is not a career where, like for example, a, a career in law or things like that. You can, as a 16, 17, you can go to college and they can tell you, these are the stages. You're going to do this, there are going to be this many years of school, then you have to network over here and then you can find a job over there. And it's pretty clear in a way how your career will evolve. With music, it's not like that at all. You have no idea how it's going to come. You have no idea what kind of musician you will be. I had no idea that I would be this kind of musician when I started, you know, because kind of, you, you're finding yourself, you know. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a mystery. And, and, and uh, all I can say is that circumstances made it that I will be this way, more than me in a conscious way deciding that. You know? also a teacher, an instructor, and you also have written some critically acclaimed instruction books and videos. What are some of the basic rudiments that 
you had to learn, especially because one of your mentors was Dr. Barry Harris. And when you moved here in 1985, you went and attended his, his what we call the jazz workshop, his college. Right. I came to study with him. I came to New York for that purpose. Uh, what, what, I, what I think and from my experience, it's, it's a combination of things. There, there are many, or oh, let me say it this way. Music is art. And art is something that has to do with beauty and aesthetics and has to do with your personality and has to do, to do with, with your way of expressing yourself. Many things that are, you know, more abstract. But also there's a very, very important part of art and that's the craftsmanship. And, and what I've learned is that you really have to develop your craft. You have to, you have, to have really strong foundations in, in your technique, in your knowledge of harmony, in your understanding of the history of the music and the different styles, to be able to uh, understand and analyze the music that you are kind of like standing on the shoulders of and the musicians. So it was very clear that a lot of hard work had to go into it. And uh, that's something that I was very fortunate to be in New York around so many people. Frank West is one of them who were part of this revolution, this, you know, new music that is evolving. And we, uh, we hear, hear of Charlie Parker, of John Coltrane from books, but these people hung out with them. And what they will tell you is that every name that you mentioned that is very, very um, influential on the music, they stood out in how much time they put into their instrument and into this mu their music. They they always have stories about these people going beyond what the ten thousand hours of work that they say you have to be they put double. So it was it was clear that you really have to really really work hard and not stop to develop it. At the same time, you, you were around the people who were doing it, and you know Walter Booker is one of the guys that I used to hang out and played for many years and was a very close friend. And he, you know, he worked with Tony Monk for a while, and he said that he he was hanging out with him outside the Village Vanguard after about a month that they were working together, and he said to him, Monk, is everything okay? What I do is everything, you know, he's trying to make sure that the way he's playing is because Monk wouldn't say anything, so Monk said, Yeah, man, everything is cool. Just take it easy. Just take it easy. So that's a very very nuanced comment. What do you mean, take it easy? That means just be yourself. Don't worry about it. Just relax, you know. Let the music take you. So these are lessons that the practice is not going to give you. This is a lesson that the doing will give you, being on the bandstand with people like that. So to, to be really great, you have to combine that very hard work. But you have to be on the scene. You have to be with these people. You have to be around people who do the music that you love. And I think that's what students always have to remember. If they are aspiring to be great musicians, they, at some point they have to come to New York. They have to experience that. They have to have the direct relation and direct contact with the people who do the music that they love because there's more to it than the things that you learn, the things that you practice. They're very subtle things, but they're the ones who make the difference. <laughs>
jazz music mean to you? Oh, that's a good question. Well, for one thing, it, it means life <laughs> in many ways. And, and jazz has been uh, a gift that keeps giving me things because the people that I'm around, the people that I love, the people that I, I, I am with and my career and all that is, has to do with it. But beyond my selfish thought of it, I think that what's fascinating about jazz and, and that's something that has to do historically with the evolution of humankind. It really represents freedom. And it represents freedom with a lot of responsibility. I think that it, it tells you anybody could do it. You don't have to be from a certain clan or a certain uh, hierarchy, a certain class to, to be able to play this music. And you are allowed to have your expression in the way that you want to do it. You're allowed to be an artist completely with your individual sound that reflects who you are, regardless of who you are. But you have to have the responsibility of being a very good at what you do, because it's not, it's serious music, you know what I mean? So it demands a lot of you, but it gives you the freedom to, to be who you are. And I think jazz has always been the beacon of freedom in the 50s when they went to the beyond the Iron Curtain, you know, and brought jazz. Jazz represented freedom to a lot of people who were under the Soviet Union rule. And I think that jazz keeps doing it by going into other countries that don't have freedom. And, and uh, I just came from Istanbul, and in Istanbul there is freedom, but uh, in, culturally women are a lot, are many, in, in many situations, are repressed. But the women that were in our uh, chorus, they were very liberated. And jazz represented freedom for them. You know what I mean? So, so jazz has a very strong social meaning that goes beyond just the art that it is. But it's because what a great art it is. It, it, it kind of delivers freedom to a lot of people around the world. And I think it's uh, 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 a style of music that allows people from all kinds to integrate and, and to, to make something together. It became so broad now because world music from all over the world got into jazz and drew from jazz and that's okay because it is a, a music that allows you to have that freedom. It allows you to express yourself in a way that is unique to you but it also teaches you about communication, it teaches you about respect to other people, it teaches you about love for other people, it teaches you about make, having joy with people that are completely different from you. So I think j jazz is a, is, a, is a wonderful thing that happened to the world. That will do it again for another edition of the Pace Report reporting live here at Jazz at the Catano here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Mr. Ronnie Ben-Hur for his time, as well as the staff and management here at Jazz at the Catano. As always, please visit my website, www.thepaceweport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.